So this is another chapter in my ongoing series uh, during my tailwheel conversion training. This is actually from my very first lesson, and this is taxi and takeoff. This is a Piper Super Cub, and uh, this airplane actually has heel brakes, which adds to the challenge because that's super weird when you're used to dealing with toe brakes. The brakes are down here with your heels. So that's what you want to do. So it's kind of this dance that you're doing where you're braking and you're runnering. So all my previous training and flying for years had been in tricycle gear aircraft. So there's nothing intuitive about this, uh, but I was very keen to check it out. Remember that this is like a forklift truck, okay? It steers from the back. So what you want to do is anticipate where the front wheels are going to go. Don't put the front wheel into the ditch. Gotcha. The back wheel you don't want to knock over taxiway lights with. Okay? So the center of gravity is behind the main gear in a tail dragger. Uh, that gives you an advantage for rough field takeoff and so on, but it creates a great deal of instability as far as the tail wanting to get away from you. So despite having briefed the basic technique and concepts around taxiing, I still completely screwed up my first attempt at making it turn. Now you see the way you're going at this? You're going to end up putting the tail wheel into the weeds, right? Totally. It's go yeah. off. The big problem is if there's a lot of drop, yeah. you can bottom out at the spring of the tail wheel. You know what I mean? Like if there's a huge four or five inch lip on the asphalt, right. then you'll end up sitting on the spring, which is not good. So now it's, you see, because the turning radius is fairly limited if all you're doing is steering with the tail wheel. I need these brakes. You'll have to add brakes if you want to tighten up the turning radius. Yeah, yeah. It's like driving a tractor trailer only backwards, right? So yeah, there's nothing intuitive about that. Learning to taxi with a tricycle gear airplane, we don't really think about the tail at all. Just track the center line, put the nose where you want to, and you're good to go. But with tailwheel, you're steering from the back, so you really need to think about that tail swing. So what you need to do is cut the corner with your inside main gear and keep it as close as possible to the inside corner, and that way the tail will be tracking cleanly behind you. If you steer like you're in a tricycle gear aircraft, the tail will swing way wide, and if there's like a drop off at the edge of the concrete or there's taxiway lights, then you're definitely damaging something. You're either knocking over taxiway lights or you're damaging the spring or some part of the tailwheel. So uh, it's, it's pretty challenging to keep that tailwheel right behind you. So when you compare the two, uh, you can see the difference in the line that you need to track. And it definitely doesn't come naturally. But when I thought about it enough, I got the hang of it. I learned quickly to ignore the tricycle gear instincts and it started to make sense. Watch the front wheel and anticipate the turning radius. Get the front wheel just skimming the corner of this. Oh, I see. So something more like this is what yeah. I want to do. Yeah, exactly. You've got to reduce turning radius and you also want to anticipate how much that tail is swinging around. You don't want to knock stuff over with the tail, right? Yep. Obviously a bigger problem in bigger airplanes. Right. You, know, you can imagine the Lancaster, how long that fuselage is. You know, he can't just turn it around on a taxiway. But the other thing to remember is back pressure. keep the stick sucked back into your gut while you're taxiing because if you inadvertently jab the brakes on, it's your last line of defense to keep from nosing over. Gotcha. Okay, now try the brakes a bit before we get there to get the feel of them. It does take a fair amount, eh? Yeah. And that's good because you don't want really grabby brakes on a tailwheel plane or you'll end up on your nose. Well, this is good to know because I'm always real gentle with the brakes in the other planes, so good to know that it's more sensitive. One of the things that people like about this, especially pilots that fly other airplanes, is that when they master a tailwheel airplane, they find that all their other flying improves. Tailwheel flying just makes sure that everything that you know about flying is implemented. And your feet will get you out of trouble one day too. Yeah. Aggressive aileron input can cause a wing drop and a stall at a crucial moment. You start becoming more rudder centric with the airplane, you're going to be a much better pilot. Awesome. You can do your run up here. I got brakes on, you got a checklist? Okay, so the checklist is brakes on, temperatures in the green, fuel on fullest tank. So now we're going to switch over to the right tank. By taxiing on the lower tank, at least we verify that it flows. Control column all the way back, and I'll help you with that. I'll hold that so your hands are free. Throttle up to 1800. Okay, so I'm on the brakes pretty hard there. Yeah. All right. And then uh, bag check. Okay, we're back on both. Okay, and then we've got mixture check. It's very sudden, like it's not that precise. Got it. All right, and then carb heat. Throttle back to idle. With the carb heat hot? Yeah. 
Uh, slow idle, slow idle, you mean there? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then idle back to 900. And then car beat off. All right, so run up checks complete. Pre takeoff checks to go. Throttle is 1,000. Check. Primer locked. Check. Master on. Check. Mags on both. Car beat cold. Extra rich. Extra rich. Flaps as required. We don't require any. Uh, trim set. Affirmative. Okay. Uh, fuel valve is on. That's the one that chooses tanks. There's not an additional shutoff. Nope, effect. that's it. Yep. Door secure. Seats yep. and harnesses are secure. Check. And controls free and correct. And altimeter set. Okay, takeoff briefing. So takeoff briefing is uh, you're going to try this takeoff if anything goes wrong. I'm going to take over. And uh, basically what you're going to do here is you're going to leave the stick neutral. Okay? Yep. You're going to taxi out in the position. You're going to line up with the runway. Make sure the tail wheel is locked. You're going to slowly but surely add full power. I mean, don't do not yeah, yeah. do it so that we're only at full power by the time we get halfway down the runway, but don't jab it on either like we talked about. Right. And all you're doing is staying square to the seat, sighting down through the tubes, maintaining yaw control. Yep. I think the best analogy is it's like boxing, okay? It's not ballroom dancing, so don't try and be very graceful with it. It's more like punch and jab. Yeah, punch and jab, punch, punch, get it back to the middle and, okay. and neutralize when everything's when everything's in the middle. You know what I mean? Cool. Because if you start trying to be graceful, you're going to start developing the serpentine swerving action, yeah, and eventually back. you'll get to the point where you can't correct it. Gotcha. And that's the infamous ground loop, which is definitely a risk during takeoff and landing, and even during taxiing at slow speeds it can happen. So I'll definitely be doing a ground loop video, and if it's not already done, it'll be on my channel soon, so watch for that. Is that punch and jab also for landing, or are you talking just for takeoff? Oh yeah, no, it's okay. for everything. For everything, gotcha. It's for everything, but primarily for takeoff. Takeoff's like dynamic. The neat thing about it is that airspeed's constantly increasing, right. and you're going to get somewhere in a fairly short order. Landing is more protracted, it's spread out. Right. So, let's give it a try. Nobody's coming. Okay. Well, traffic, Foxy Oscar is uh, taking position runway 09 for immediate takeoff, and it'll be a right-hand turn out. I want to get my wheel right close to that gap there. Yeah, and then just take it out. This thing is going to be airborne in about a third of this runway, so don't worry about hogging up a bit of runway here while you're getting straightened out. Yeah, All right. Something like that? Yep. So it's going to be full power, heels away from the brakes, neutral stick. Yep. And am I going to pick the tail up? Or? The tail will come up when it's ready, and the whole airplane will fly when it's ready, and if we're a little bit slow, then just lower the nose and stay in ground effects and pick up a bit of speed. Gotcha. The airplane will take off by itself in the attitude that it's in. Okay. All we're shooting for is between 60 and 70 on climb out. Here we go. Okay. I was leading with the right rudder, expecting yeah. more, but it wasn't as bad as I expected. Oh, I got my shoe stuck there. But oh, my shoe got stuck under the... Uh, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just add some excitement to it. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. All right. All right so, so engine pressure temperature was green. I didn't even check all that stuff because she was going so fast. Yeah. So I just let it fly off. I didn't want to look down for a second. No. Well, it's you can tell when it's ready to fly. It communicates with you. The airplane starts to get responsive. It starts to feel light on the wheels. Yep. All right. So now we'll bring the power back to 2,400 RPM. 24. That's a that's our climb power setting. Okay, so we're going for 65. Yeah, in that neighborhood. This is awesome. This is a fun airplane. It's honest. It's tough. But obviously, any tailwheel plane presents a challenge taking off and landing. But once it's up in the air, it's just a hoot. Yeah, man, it's great. It's really just a flying jeep. So my, my sole of my shoe got caught, got the wrong shoes on for this. Yeah, I always uh, suggest the thinnest possible shoes you can wear. Yeah. I can actually tighten my shoelace to have control for a sec. Okay. My clutch foot, that shoe gets loose. I was impressed with the punch and jab direction is totally true, right? Because you got to be right on it. But uh, these are the wrong kind of shoes. 
to wear. Yeah, big time. You gotta those. Uh, the oh lordy, no, you can't wear those. Do not wear these kind of shoes when flying tailwheel. <laughs> At one point, my foot got stuck. There's this seam on the metal. At the worst possible time, left rudder, full left rudder, got stuck. And that's not what you want because you usually need right rudder. But we saved it, but I, I had to like jam my foot out. That's what happened there. So with the left rudder, my foot got stuck. Oh, great. That's the, that's the worst place to be, but anyway. Oh, yeah, you dealt with it well. And I knew it when I left the house that morning that I was wearing the wrong shoes for flying, but I was in a hurry and I was like, ah, I'll be fine. I've flown with Cessnas with these shoes before. Uh, but my favorite shoes for flying are actually this old pair that I've got, these old Morels. And uh, if anybody knows where to get shoes like this, please leave in the comments. I can't find them anymore. These are years old. I've beat the heck out of them. But I love these shoes for both driving and for flying. They're super low profile and they've got almost no sole. So you really can feel the pedals. It's great. Anyway, landing in a tailwheel is another chapter which I've already done. So check my channel for that or I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but for the rest of this video, it's going to be about takeoffs from the grass. So let's get into this, uh, start figuring out how to spin her around on the dime. So punch that left brake, give it a little shot of power. There you go. Oh, yeah, okay. Better, yeah, I'm being too gentle, eh? Uh, you can't be gentle with this thing. Like I said, it's a cheap. All right, let's get rid of one notch of flaps. Okay, there's one notch right there. So we're, we're back to one notch of flaps. Yeah, I tend to take off with one notch if I'm on a rough or a soft surface. It gets me airborne faster. Yeah. And it does inhibit the rate of climb somewhat. All right, so let's take it right up to the edge of the taxiway. In fact, you can go right onto it. Don't waste any runway. Take it right up. Yeah. Now we're going to start right here. Okay. All right. We're back on the grass. All right. So tailwheel is locked. How do you make sure the tailwheel is locked? By just just you can it. feel resistance in the rudder pedals now. Otherwise, it would be swinging very easily. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Yeah, I guess we're pre-takeoff check. Yep. Okay, pre-takeoff check is complete. Flaps right. are going to be one notch. All right. I'm not quite straight. Let's fix that now. Here we go. All right. Traffic Fox Q Oscar's taking off 09 on the grass. Yeah, it's not requiring as much right rudder as I expected. I haven't changed the trim. I didn't have trim set for takeoff no, there. So and I'm, it's fine. I'm pushing her down a lot right now just okay. to make her stay. Well, stand. wait a second though, because you got to get rid of the flaps. I know, but I don't want to force it yet. Okay, so get rid of the flaps, but don't let the attitude change. Yep, I there got you it. go. Does that feel better? Feels better. Okay. Alright, so engine temperature pressure is all green. And we're going to reduce power to 24. Yep. So when do you do that? At 400 feet AGL? Uh, just whenever you're comfortable. I just think, it, you know, an engine's like a candle, right? If you burn it twice as hot, it lasts half as long. So if you don't need to punish it, don't. Right. So doing what I felt like I should do naturally worked well. I wasn't really trying right rudder intentionally as much as I did on the other ones. I just did what felt right. I think I might have been overthinking the right rudder well, before. Well, I mean, this is why we discuss it ahead of time, because then ideally what you should be doing is using it intuitively. All yeah. you're doing is correcting for y'all. Like, it always makes me a little curious when people say, how much right rudder should I give it? And I say, what it needs. What it needs, the right yeah. amount. So Dennis is an awesome instructor, and as you can tell, I'm having a hard time cutting it down because his instruction is so thorough and there's so much wisdom. So I'm going to continue breaking this up. Uh, I'm just at this point early on in my tailwheel training, but I'm having a blast. It's a great distraction from IFR training, which is what I'm also doing at the same time here. So this just flying intuitively is brilliant. I really love just the stick and rudder. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this tailwheel flying series. I don't know how many of these I'm going to do exactly, which is why the numbering system is kind of random on these tips. Uh, I'm just going to keep making them and sprinkling them in among my other videos until I run out of tailwheel material, I guess. So as usual, my disclaimer, I'm a private pilot making these videos for self-analysis purposes. I'm happy to share. And for more virtual ride-along flying videos like this, please subscribe. And keep on keeping your flight chops sharp. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share aviation, a network for pilots by pilots.